Meet the Mets, meet the Mets. Step right up and greet the Mets. Bring your kiddies, bring your wife. Guaranteed to have the time of your life because the Mets are really sucking the ball. Knocking those home runs over the wall. East side, west side, everybody's coming down to meet the M-E-T-S Mets of New York Town. Oh, the butcher and the baker and the people on the streets, where do they go? To meet the Mets! Oh, they're hollering and cheering and they're jumping in their seats, where do they go? What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back to the channel, back for another breaking news live stream like last night where we talked about someone in connection with the LA Angels, that being their former GM. Now, Mets GM should be made official today in Billy Epler. And in return, we get something that I just feel completely bamboozled about. And while there was some uncertainty leading over the past couple of days as to why Noah didn't accept his qualifying offer, because in hand with how much the pitching market has been expensive, with guys like Andrew Heaney, $8.5 million deal over one year when he had a piss for a year with the Yankees and the Angels. You also had um, Rodriguez, the Southpaw, coming from the Red Sox to the Tigers, $77 million deal over five years. So the pitching market's been expensive to start out in certain ways, at least longer term. So there was some belief that Noah would say decline, but also potentially landing him on a multi-year deal. That would make sense. But no, he goes to, yes, the LA Angels on a one-year $21 million deal, according to Jeff Pass. And so in today's stream, we're going to be breaking down everything there is to know this point about Noah, why this decision potentially happened, who's at more fault for the falling out with Noah and the Mets. Is it more on Noah's side? Is it more on the Mets' side? Trying to put the pieces together until we get further information at this point, because it's 11 a.m., Eastern time live right now. I did not want to wake up to this news today. I got to be honest with you. I'm someone that's been a heavy advocate for no overturning. And I really did not think this was going to happen. And it, it's really hard to wrap my head around why this makes sense. Um, but at the end of the day, that's what we're going to be getting into. I have a lot to say on this. I have a lot to say on how the Mets can counter this now. Then Noah is no longer a New York Met. And really, we're going to go from there. But before I go any further, shout out to everybody in the chat. Thank you so much for watching this live on replay. Make sure to smash that like and subscribe on for your boy. Help us get to a couple hundred likes by the end of the stream. Help us get to 10K subs. I'm going to want to know everyone's initial thoughts and reactions in the chat right now. If you're watching live or on replay, let me know in the comments. Guys, are you happy about Noah leaving? Are you sad about it? Let me know because I know we're going to get conflicting replies. I know when I've talked about Noah in the past, I've had a lot of people in favor. I've had some people against too on him potentially returning. So I really want to get a grasp of how everyone is feeling right now at this point in time, fellow Mets and baseball fans. Because like I said, this is this is a lot to take in knowing that it would have made far more sense in my mind as a fan following along what's been happening if Noah say signed a multi-year deal elsewhere, because maybe that's something the Mets wouldn't want to commit to, knowing that there's a lot of uncertainty with what you're getting from Noah. He, ne he still needs to prove that he can pitch his normal arsenal again because he wasn't able to throw any breaking pitches when he pitched the two games for the Mets at the end of the 2021 season. So there's plenty of uncertainty with him coming back from Tommy John surgery. So in a multi-year deal instance, I think that would have been far more understanding from a Mets point of view, at least, as to why this relationship has ended with him going to the Angels, a team that's desperate for starting pitching. But Noah goes now to the Angels on a deal just $2.6 million more 
than what the Mets offer him with the qualifying offer, and which I know plenty of you guys that have been following along the channel that have been, you know, in the chat and stuff have said that, oh, that's too much money to give Noah. No, and clearly it wasn't even enough. So to put things in perspective, folks, the qualifying offer made perfect sense for the Mets. I was not against them going down that route at all. And given the fact that Noah said, he literally said, this was literally coming out of his mouth right at the end of the season, that he would be grateful if the Mets gave him a qualifying offer. So it seems like he definitely had a change of heart to a certain extent as the offseason has begun, knowing that there's some more money out there. He chose to snag a couple more mil, not even $3 million more. Again, it's a lot of money. I understand that. So Noah went with the money. He took a couple more mil than he would have gone with the Mets. But now a lot of questions ensue for the Mets. And why exactly did this happen? Were the Mets able to counter in this instance? Did they feel it wasn't worthy of countering? Did Noah just feel that he wanted to commit to the Angels on a couple more mil and go from there? It just, I will say, I understand that players are players at the end of the day. Um, and But something has always felt slightly disingenuous about this report coming out, knowing how adamant and really how public Noah's made it look like that he would be returning to the Mets. So I'm not sure potentially a GM change over, you know, the past 24 hours, even though it's not finalized yet. I doubt it has had any say in this. It's really a head scratcher in a lot of different ways. So I don't want us to draw conclusions and say that, oh, you know, this is all on one person. This is all on another person. Until we get further reporting, I don't think we should jump the gun on that just yet. But if reviewing this from the forefront, from what we're currently seeing, it does come off in the sense of Noah just wanting to get a couple more mil. And rightfully so, he's chasing the bag. I get that. But man, as a Mets fan, as someone who's been supporting Noah since the beginning, this sucks. This is a gut punch. I did not want to see this today. I know there's fans in the chat that don't give a damn. They're like, you know what? He hasn't really pitched much in the past two years. Shouldn't phase you. I understand that completely. But knowing the impact that Noah's had in this, uh, with this Mets club, knowing the uncertainties the Mets already have with this rotation. And I understand that you... I. I've been under the belief all along heading into the offseason, as many of you guys know if you've been following the channel, that it made sense, it makes sense for the Mets to operate in the scenario where they don't know if they're going to get anything from Noah in 2022, rotation-wise. Because you don't know. There's still so much uncertainty. Is he going to be on a pitch limit? How many pitches of his arsenal can he actually utilize next year? How healthy is he going to be? So I wanted to make sure that the Mets went this offseason with the belief that they don't know if they're going to get anything from him. And now they definitely are going to do that because they don't have him. So... It sucks. Uh, there's no other way to put it. My natural concern with Noah leaving first and foremost is the fact of this potentially being another type of Zach Wheeler situation where the Mets lose another pitcher that still has plenty to give and he definitely can thrive elsewhere. And that very well could be the case with Noah. Again, we'll see what, what the future holds. I don't know how much blame I can put on the Mets right now. I don't know really how much say they were able to do in a bigger counter. It's just it's just a bad look all around to see Noah leave just for a couple more million. Like I said, I think it would have made so much more sense, and it would have been far more justified from a fan's perspective. If you're asking for my opinion, and I think a lot of you guys could agree, in the scenario where he signed a multi-year deal, something that he wouldn't be getting with the Mets, maybe higher AEV because the Angels just threw it all at him because they're desperate for pitching. That makes perfect sense in my mind. And it's like, okay, that still sucks, but like I get it. This one, I don't understand nearly as much so again continue let me know your thoughts in the chat folks we got a lot more to unravel on this one man oh man okay hold on i'm going to check one something quick Okay, let's. I want to see everyone's initial reaction, folks, and then we're going to go from here and expand more on the comp pick that would be coming to the Mets right now, how that factors into things for them, and really what is their approach now with Noah Syndergaard no longer being a New York Met. What's up, Tim? Great member on the channel. No. Um, Thomas, I did check. Um, he's he's betting on himself. I understand what Noah's doing for sure. Again, I don't know if this is going to be the complete end of Noah's time in Queens. Maybe he does come back a year from now after taking the bag and betting on himself with the Angels. But at the same time, it doesn't look like that. It does look like Noah's time with the Mets has been finished. Again, I don't know how everyone's thoughts are right now. For me personally, it, this is just a big gut punch as a fan to see him go. That that's that's first and foremost. Putting aside the fan aspect, however, I will say that Noah is 
coming into a season with oodles amount of uncertainty. And that's something that the Mets by no means could bank on going into next season. So I understand the thought process behind going all in now and free agency pitching wise, but you really had to do that regardless on what Noah's fate would be in 2022. So now that Noah's gone, what does the compensation pick mean? Well, it looks like the Mets are going to be gaining a second or a third round pick from reports I've seen. We'll see once that's solidified and once it's made official that the Angels post that they signed into the one-year deal. We'll also get more information, too, once Billy Epler and his presser happens, which hopefully should transpire later today. Maybe we'll be live again to talk about further on Epler's approach, but I really need to combine those two topics right now because they go in hand because there's been uncertainty more than anything, I think, when Marcus Stroman I think we can all agree right now, right? Marcus Stroman, I I absolutely would love to see Marcus back in the rotation for the Mets next year, given the Mets' lack of starting pitching depth and needing that certainty of a guy that hopefully will be staying healthy like he did in 2021. But there's been plenty of reasons to believe that Noah won't return the Mets. So in the scenario where he doesn't, the Mets have even that much more to address in a rotation. That's led by Jacob deGrom, who's the best pitcher in baseball. But what's his health status going to be next season and beyond? You know, there's Cookie Carrasco is just coming off of surgery. Taiwan Walker had a Jekyll and Hyde first season as a Met. What can we get from him? The Mets 1,000% need to prioritize pitching more than anything in for agency and go from there. And there's really no ifs, ands, or buts about it with how will they address this. They need to make a statement here and show that they can go all in, get a guy like whether it's a bigger name of a Carlos Rodon on a multi-year deal potentially. Can they snag a Max Scherzer, which I don't see as likely, not because the Mets can't afford him, but because I don't see why Max would want to come to the Mets. Money talks, I understand that. I still find it far-fetched, so I'm going to take Scherzer out of the discussion still until proven otherwise because it just it's, doesn't, it's never felt like a possibility. But maybe the Mets do go all in on him. You know, the Kevin Gosmans of the world, the Zach Grinkies, the Kershaws, if his health is okay. There's a lot of pitchers out there. We're aware of that. But losing Noah now and looking like you may potentially lose Marcus, they have a lot of holes that they need to fill in this rotation. And if they don't, then they have their by far their biggest issue in 2022. I think that they will address them. But Marcus is someone that they absolutely need to prioritize. And how much would they potentially be willing to overspend to keep him? That's something I don't know. I don't know if Noah taking not even $3 million more to go to LA is an indication that the Mets are not going to overspend on pitching. I do think circumstances are different, however, because Noah's situation is far different than a guy like Stroman, who was the best pitcher all year for the Mets. When it talks about staying healthy and being consistent in this rotation, Noah is a huge question mark. So my biggest concern out of all this is you lose a guy like Noah Syndergaard because of a couple more mail. It looks like this is more on Noah than it is on the Mets. Again, we'll see what further reports come out. Maybe it comes out during the live stream or after the fact. We'll talk about it again uh, when more information comes out, hopefully. But this really feels like Noah betting on himself type situation. And I don't blame the Mets for giving the qualifying offer. You know, if they they very well could have had a multi-year type deal um, in store for Noah, but maybe it wasn't as high AEV that he decided to go to LA and really take as much money as what anyone could offer him bet on himself and try to hit the market next next year in free agency and get a big payday. So there's a lot of different ways that you can think about it, but I will say that losing him, it would just suck to see him, you know, continue to do well. But if this is something that's more out of the, out of the Mets hands, knowing that they really didn't have much that they could do in this scenario, if they even maybe approached him with a multi-year deal, that made sense. Like maybe a two, three year deal. And he still said, no, I'm going to go to LA to bet on myself. And that's Noah's decision at the end of the day. And that's out of what the Mets could control. So it, it would be unfortunate. It would definitely be a bad look for us Mets fans with our relationship with Noah. Someone that I think we've all appreciated a lot over the years. And, but, you know, money money does talk at the end of the day, and that very well could have been the X factor more than anything here. It is from the forefront without deep diving anything, knowing that he got a couple million more and decided to go there. Um, Darren, what's up, my man? Um, you're at work. Uh, yeah, I know you're gutted. I know. Again, a lot a lot of people, a lot of people are gutted right now. And, I again, I don't blame you guys at all, Mets fans. I don't. I, I'm gutted, too. I was excited. I uh, woke up today. I was like, wow, the Mets have a GM. This is fun. Okay, maybe we let's get let's get the ball rolling a bit. But, you know, Mets fans aren't allowed to have good things for extended period of time. <laughs> That's just how it is. And this isn't an end-all situation or anything like that. It's just very beyond unfortunate. And until the rotation is addressed, 
we all ha- are going to have questions. You know, we're going to want Epler to jump the gun and, you know, make moves as soon as humanly possible. Obviously, it's not going to be, you know, a snap of a finger that he's going to sign, you know, these huge big name uh, pitching targets and for agency or maybe make trades uh, for agency. Uh, pardon me, trade market wise for starting pitchers. We talked about 10, at least 10 different starting pitching options for the Mets and two different top five videos. So definitely make sure to check those out, guys, if you're interested on the type of players the Mets would be going after. But man, um, the Marcus Stroman thing is is so much more important now. That you lose Noah, you know, not not to the same extent of like as if you're losing someone that isn't coming off a of Tommy John surgery, but to an extent where Marcus has been so reliable for the Mets. So I do honestly feel, and again, we'll see what happens, but I do feel that if Stroman does not come back to the Mets, it's going to be far more on Stroman's decision, just like this may very well have been more on Noah's part uh, parting ways with the Mets than it will on the Mets you know, having the willingness to bring him back. I, I absolutely think the Mets are going to prioritize Stroman to bring him back. But if he goes elsewhere, I think that's going to say more on his decision than it will on the Mets decision. Um, Same thing can be said with a lot of different player decisions. You know, just because you have money at the end of the day and you're willing to throw it at a player, it doesn't mean that's necessarily going to stick that they want to be here. There's been a lot of, you know, different ways to take how Stroman's tenure has went as a Met with how his portrayal has been as a Met with... um. You know, him, his comfortability, I, I really think it's a huge question mark. But I, I think more than anything, the Mets 1,000% need to prioritize him, knowing that you don't have – you you need, you need to prioritize a guy that gave you, you know, as many innings as he did last year and is healthy and looking strong for the years going forward and still has age on his side in his late 20s. Um, and Sandy with a $5 donation, thank you so much for the dono. And Sandy, I appreciate that. No GM, no present baseball operations. We're going to lose potential um, signings. This team going downhill quick. No, and Sandy, I think you're jumping the gun on that a lot. We do have a GM. It's literally, it's done. It just needs to be made official today because they have to work out the fine little details. But Billy Epler is the Mets uh, GM. Don't get it twisted. And he is controlling baseball operations. So that is already the two things that you said. It's contradicting that. I do think the Mets are going to have a huge offseason. Off again, big question marks now is, are they going to be able to go after? Are they going to be able to land these bigger names that are out there that are potentially looking for multi-year deals? Look, the Mets need a southpaw desperately in this rotation. And I, I don't care who you talk to. You know, every rotation usually thrives without at least one lefty in there. And there's some huge lefties available. Are the Mets willing to go after a Robbie Ray and give him something that he can't refuse to go in and get a guy that was potentially uh, really uh, – a Cy Young looking finalist from the AL with the Blue Jays last year. Will they be able to go down that route and cough up their compensation pick, which I believe is the 14th overall pick? Something that I know Sandy Allerson said they won't prioritize at first. You'd have to think circumstances are a little different now, even now with a GM. Carlos Rodon, similar story, but you don't have to give up a compensation pick for him because he was not given the qualifying offer. So will the Mets go down that route? I think the Mets are going to be involved in basically every big name starting pitcher known to man. Um, the question is, how many of them will they actually be able to reel in to Queens? Like anything else, it's easier said than done. If this hiring process has shown us anything, if Mets offseason approach last year has shown us anything, is that nothing nothing is certain until that, that's finalized. And I know that the Thor um, signing isn't official yet. It hasn't been official through the Angels, but it came out through Jeff Passan. That's as reliable as you're going to get. That's why we're live right now. It, it's inevitable. It looks like that this is, in fact, happening. Um, so I really want to know everyone's thoughts in the chat right now. What are some pitchers that you hope that, or that you believe the Mets are going to prioritize in for agency or the trade market now, just everyone in the chat, feel free to spam some names that you would like to see the Mets go after. If you're watching this live, live, make sure to let me know. Cause I'm, I'm really curious to see how you guys are feeling about this whole process. And if you think this is going to be good or bad for the Mets in the end. Um, and again, I don't, I don't know how much blame, if at all, I should put on the Mets here. Naturally, when you see you lose a guy that has plenty of potential to still be a dominant pitcher again, like Noah, there's concern because you only lost him for only 2.6 mil. But again, I don't blame the Mets for giving the qualifying offer. And if reports come out that he, the Mets didn't in fact approach him on a multi-year deal, then I, I can't, I can't fault them at all. I think that they did everything humanly possible to make sure that Noah returns. And then he just decides to go elsewhere for a couple more million to bet on himself. If that's the case, Mets hands are tied there. I will not, I'm really not going to blame them much in that scenario. Then it's, it's, that would be awfully different than the Zach Wheeler situation because Wheeler 
got the $115 million deal, I believe, over five years with the Phillies. And Brody Van Wagenen didn't prioritize him like an effing idiot and didn't replace him. It's one thing to not prioritize a starting pitcher that still has plenty of years to show how good he is, which is Zach Wheeler. Loved him as a Met. Still do, even though it sucks he's with the Phillies now. Um, That was a different situation then because Brody and the Wolpons, we knew how they operated. Different circumstances, just similarities come into mind in the sense of if Noah does come back fully from Tommy John, which he very, very well can do. And then it just, it just sucks knowing that he can be part of the Mets uh, to really um, blossom again in his career. Cause he's definitely been huge for the Mets in the past. Pathetic says Elvin, no pitcher sign Correa. Then no, if the Mets don't sign any pitchers, they're not even going to sniff playoffs next year. I promise you that. Epler is Brody V2. Nathan, you you have no clue what you're talking about, respectively. Please stop it. Um, Verlander, Stroman, Rodon. Okay. Verlander, I don't think it's likely because you have to give up the compensation pick for him. I think the Mets should absolutely prioritize other people over Verlander to give up a first-round pick, personally. They're going to go down that route. Maybe Scherzer, Ray, Rodon, Gosman, Kershaw. Too much. I don't. The Mets aren't going to land all of them. At most, it would be two. Jumpy and wild work. What's up, Michael King? Great member on the channel. We need to see solid pitchers to sign for us. Yep, at least we get a draft pick for Noah leaving. We do. Again, this there is a huge draft class coming up, which is important. But man, oh man, it's still it. It, it just this is just a gut punch. That's all. More than anything, this is just a gut punch to start my day. Was was not expecting this. Under no circumstances should the Mets be signed for agents attached to a qualifying offer. There are plenty of free agents not attached to it. While that is definitely true, there are circumstances as to why the Mets should go after people with a qualifying offer attached. And I think that's more than anything justified by the names that are southpaws out there that would drastically help improve this rotation right away. Like a Robbie Ray, like a Carlos Rodon, if he can stay healthy. That's the biggest question mark with Rodon. So if the Mets don't go the Rodon route or really don't prioritize him, I can understand that because you're adding a guy that still has uncertainty for a rotation that has as much uncertainty as it is. You want more, you know, reliable guys. And that's why Stroman should be a priority. You know, at, you can be a great pitcher all you want, but if you can't stay healthy, it doesn't mean Jack. And I, I love Jacob DeGrom to death, but him not pitching one game in the second half of the season for the Mets. You know, that was huge X factor for them having the downfall they had. If no, if, J- if Jake was healthy, I feel fairly confident saying the Mets would have been in either playoffs or just out versus how they ended last season, even with their abysmal offense. Can they sign Mats again? I don't think they're going to go after Mats again, personally. And I don't think that they really should either. Um, yeah, no, I-, I don't think that they should go after Mats. That's why Rodon and Kershaw are more noteworthy than Ray. While true, you also have to keep in mind that Rodon and Kershaw are dealing with injuries too. Kershaw especially, we don't know the significance. He might have a significant injury still. And Rodon, how's his shoulder going to heal up? So those are the different X factors in comparison to those two that are available without a qualifying offer, I agree, versus Ray. You know, the Mets, if they're going to bring in one of those, then, you know, they need, they need to do their absolute best to make sure those guys are healthy. Because if they're not, then... We're right back where we started with everything again. Are they bringing back Familia? I have no clue, but I hope they don't, Todd. Uh, I I really I really hope they don't. Sure, is there three one hundred nine Stroman five one twenty five? Then buys Brian and Corey Dickerson. I'm not in favor of Corey Dickerson. I think there's better you know outfield depth options than him. Um, I don't think the Mets are going to get Scherzer either. Uh, more so because of Scherzer lack of willingness to come to the Mets. Will Scherzer prioritize money though? He could, he definitely could, but you know, I, I just, I, I have to, I really have to be proven otherwise to get on the Scherzer train to think that he would actually want to come here. What's up Goomba? How's it going my man? Again, shout out everybody in the chat guys. Hope you all are enjoying the stream, even though that I know that we're a little, we're a little depressed in Mets land right now, right? Please. So completely here. You guys all the way from the back, help us get a 10 K subs though. You guys enjoy streams, you know, all breaking news for the Mets throughout the off season, all news reports, individual videos you can think of. We cover here on already NYM. We're trying to get a 10 K by December. So help us join uh, 
join the family. Uh, that will be our one-year anniversary on YouTube as well in December, so I'm excited for that. Help us get to 200 likes by the end of the stream. That would also mean a lot too. But yeah, I would say, as I said already, this is a heartbreaker in my opinion. You know, just because it, it just felt so unlikely that Noah would leave. And I know that there was an increased likeliness of him doing a multi-year deal, but it still felt like that the Mets would be able to get that done. So I, this just feels like, like a slap in the face. Uh, just something that everything that's led up to this point, you would not think that this would really transpire. Marcus Stroman to the Angels. That that feels really like a strong possibility. Like that's felt like a really smart move for the Angels since day one, if that comes to fruition. But Noah on a one-year deal, damn. <laughs> That I did, you know, I did not. I, that that's a wild card for me. Did not caught me blind. I did not expect that one. But it's some substance two fifty year G Thomas. Thank you. I see some questions. Let me get to them quick, folks, and then we'll continue to share our raw reaction and thoughts here. Ah, just still, ah, bad taste in my mouth, man. Hopefully, the Epler presser can bring some light to the situation later. Because I know that Epler is going to be asked right away about Noah, I'm sure. Same thing with Sandy, Steve. I don't know if they're going to be involved in the presser, um, but we'll see. Here's what I'd like um, to know. Since Harvey, Thor, DeGrom, Mats Wheeler, can the Mets put back together a rotation that's anything like that? I think they absolutely can. Um, but I, I don't think we should do comparisons either. You know, as dominant as that rotation was, very little time did they spend together. There was always at least one guy injured. Wheeler was a big factor of dealing with injuries during that time. Matt's dealt with his injuries. Harvey dealt with his injuries, you know, towards you know, leading up to his departure with the Mets. So don't get me wrong. It was always about potential with the Mets, with the rotation in the mid-2010s, right? It was always about the potential of having those five potential aces, right? And even Bartolo Colon you could throw in there too because we loved uh, Big Sexy. But they did not spend much time together all in unison. And again, that's something that, is a priority for the Mets this offseason. They need to get certainty next year. Injuries will always inevitably happen, but you should do your utmost to acquire players that can help give you stability every fifth day as a starter and also help give you stability with staying in the lineup in general. If the Mets aren't healthy on the starting pitching front, on the player position player front, they are not going to get anywhere. So that, more than anything, should be a huge focus for them this offseason. Do I uh, do I blame Cohen? No, I don't blame Cohen at all. Hell no. By no means do I blame Cohen for this. I, I think if there's anyone to blame right now, it might be towards Noah. But again, I'm refraining from really trying to point fingers too much because we don't know the full details yet. We just know that Noah is no longer New York Met and he's he heading to the Angels. But like I said, if we're, con if we're, if we're connecting the dots, it looks like Noah's betting on himself and got himself a couple more mil than what he got with the Mets on the qualifying offer. And that's why he declined it. And that would be indication that that was Noah's choice and, you know, that the Mets really didn't have much say in this. So, we'll, again, we're going to see this is a fluent situation. We'll see more details come out either during the live stream or after the fact that we'll touch on in, in a future live streamer video. But, yeah, just, ugh, just, just sucks. Just sucks. Trust no one. I mean, yeah, look, that, that's a prime example with Noah. Absolutely. Yeah, no, 100%. Uh, 100% <laughs> with how how Noah's, uh, you know, perception has been towards us fans over the past couple of weeks to a month, even two months um, to, you know, him parting ways now. My DeGrom, am I worried about DeGrom's player option? Not, not in the slightest, no. Jake is the least. The only worry I have with Jake is, you know, making sure he's healthy next year. That's all I care about when it comes to Jake. What's the best rotation the Mets can have next year in your mind? Honestly, I think the Mets could have an awesome rotation if they have DeGrom, Stroman, um, Taiwan, you know, towards the back half, Cookie as either your fifth or, you know, Cookie even as your, as your sixth starter potentially because you can't rely on Carrasco. I'm sorry. You just can't. He he hasn't proven that you can right now. I nothing personal against Cookie. Love the guy. Love his story battling back from leukemia. You know he's an absolute beauty. But until we see him fully healthy, have a normal off season, you know this is his last year with the Mets. Um, off that two years left on his contract, it, you can you can't even rely fully on Taiwan right now. You need to have Jake, 
Strowman. This would be the most ideal for me. You have DeGrom. You have Strowman. I really think that's a, a Robbie Ray would be fantastic for this rotation because you need a lefty. I think Rodon would be awesome too. But at the same time, I would love Rodon, but I need to know that guy's healthy. That's my, that's, uh, it's such a, it's such a pain in the ass trying to think about this right now. I got to be honest with you because there's like anyone else, there's so much uncertainty, you know, for, for the White Sox to have the willingness to not even give Rodon a qualifying offer tells me that they might not really feel comfortable about his health, right? Because they didn't even give that to him, meaning that they would have gotten a compensation pick had he signed elsewhere, right? So now they wouldn't even be getting that. There's red flags with Rodon. I really like him. If he's healthy, he's a stud. He's a guy that could be a Cy Young candidate again next year and the years going forward as a dominant southpaw in the game that has ridiculous velocity and a wipeout slider. But if he's not healthy, we have major concerns again, right? So Robbie Ray's a safer bet, but you give up that first round pick. That's the issue there. So other pitching options. I would love Scherzer in this rotation. He's a dog. Doesn't matter his age. He's defined. He Max Scherzer would would make this rotation literally insane. Absolutely insane. But whether Scherzer would be willing to come here or not is something that we don't know. And I don't I don't think sure why why the hell would Mad Max want to come to the Mets after all the things that's been reported about him? Would money really be the selling point for him? Because he says he wants to go to a winner, you know. We all love the Mets, but the Mets haven't proven to be a winner yet. Just like last offseason. That apparently was a decider in Bauer. And, you know, I'm not going to get into tangent about Bauer. Thankfully, the Mets didn't go down that route and, um, and you know, hindsight. But one of Bauer's selling points was that he wanted to go to more of a proven winner. And that wasn't the Mets, obviously, comparing to the Dodgers who, who just came off of a World Series victory. So how much will money talk this offseason? Could it be more in line with the Noah Syndergaard route where it talks so much? That money's all that matters. You throw them enough and they're going to come regardless. Maybe, but it, it varies on the player, man. It really does. So it's it's hard to say exactly what is going to be most realistic for the Mets right now when we don't know the like how how much willingness certain players are going to have to want to come here. That That is something that I'm really questioning more than anything. Awfully similar to executives wanting to come here or not. You know, it, it all goes in hand. The Mets need to prove themselves as an organization. Um, hopefully, hopefully Epler and Cohen will be a huge driving force this offseason to not just want spending money, but bringing a new, a different feel now for the Mets in year two with Cohen as owner. So I, I think there's pl- I think there's endless amount of potential for the Mets to execute big this offseason. And I don't even think it's just for agent market. I think the trade market is available too, for sure. We talked about a lot of them. There's guys from the Angels available. There's guys from the Reds available. Most notably, because they're big sellers this offseason, because they're trying to, you know, rebuild. They don't want to deal with going through these arbitration hearings from for some guys per usual um, for, as smaller market clubs. But will the Mets be willing to go more down that route for starting pitching help? Will they prioritize that? Will they prioritize someone like a Castillo? Will they prioritize someone like a Sean Manaya, a big southpaw from the Angels who's dealt with some injuries in his career? However, will they go for, you know, a Chris Bass, a Frankie Montas, a Sonny Gray? Like, there's a lot of different routes the Mets can go down. We're going to find out soon enough what they prioritize most, but we, I, we really need clarity. That's what I, that's what I got to say. They, they got the Mets need, need to give us some, some comfort this off season. And it might, it might not be for a bit though, you know, with the CBA expiring in December. And I know we got a couple of super chats. I'll address them in a second. Again, appreciate everybody's support. Thank you guys all for being here. I know that there's a very likely chance right now that we don't just have a lockout starting December, but it might be extended. So that means that all free agency talk is at halted for however long that's at a pause until CBA reaches a new agreement, you know? So maybe that'll benefit the Mets in the scenario where not many big name free agents, if at all sign until after the CBA agreement is done, that definitely could benefit them with giving them more time to really go about their outlook. now that they have Epler as a GM, but that also means that if there is an extended period of time with a lockout, there is belief across the league, according to multiple multiple uh, reports and tweets that I've seen, to indicate that the trade market would be more active naturally because you want to make offseason moves and you don't want to be dependent on something that maybe if it drags out of February till the CBA reaches an agreement, then that's like your entire offseason done with. And before you know it, spring training begins. So 
very again i i completely get it with people being in favor of certain guys or other guys i hear you everyone has their personal preference i understand the potential with a lot of these players too pitching wise it, health is just a huge thing man and that's why i would just continue to preach it stroman should be a priority but i i really feel that if stroman doesn't come back to the mets is because he doesn't want to come back just just from what i've seen and we'll, again, we'll see what happens. I don't take what I'm saying to heart. It's just my opinion as a fellow fan like you guys. I'm just sharing my thoughts here. And everyone's sharing your thoughts in the chat or in the comments if you're watching replay also. But let's see. A super chat from John. Thank you, my man, for the $2 donation. They don't spend big now. Be even more. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The Mets need to blow through the luxury tax. They like. I understand that they're saving you know, over $18 million by not keeping Noah that's going to help them a lot absolutely but they need to prioritize the money now they need to spend they need to realistically have a luxury tax at at least in the 240 250 range um circumstances change a little bit now that Noah isn't coming back because you have more money you're dealing with but if the Met the Mets need to spend they they 1000 percent need to spend because they don't have the prospect capital to single-handedly make blockbuster trades as the complete highlight of your offseason I just don't see how that's realistic, especially in a free agent market where the Mets can really prioritize on it. Something in comparison to last offseason wasn't the case. The starting pitching market last offseason wasn't nearly as deep as it is this year. So they have a lot of routes that they can go down. They just they they better spend. They I do believe that they will. I feel confident that they will. Um, so I'm not gonna stress about whether they're going to or not, but it if we say fast forward to spring training, they don't, then obviously we have a huge problem because that shows you that they're not prioritizing to win next season. But again, I don't think that's the case at all. I'm confident in this team that they're going to make moves. The question is, what moves are they going to make? That's what we'll soon find out. Ravens with the $5 donation. Thank you so much for that, my man. Again, hype in the chat to everybody that's donated. Appreciate you guys. And make sure to smash that like and subscribe on if you are, in fact, enjoying the stream. Secret base collapse episode. How the Mets five ace rotation came and went a flash of a pan. I mean, I wouldn't say it's a flash of a pan. I appreciate the donation, unless look, it that rotation was the example of what could have been, and it's something that never came to fruition. And we, health was always, always the biggest issue with that. And you can blame the Mets previous guys, you know, that they had that were dealing with um, the players health wise and all those things during the Wolpon era, but it that that's that's over that's done with yes Degrom is is the final face a part of that and luckily Degrom's the best out of all of them <laughs> so uh by a good margin so uh you know it, it, it's comforting at least knowing that out of those five the Mets have the best pitcher in the world as long as he's healthy there's no denying that I'm so sad I'm sorry Nick I know you're sad I know I know a lot of you guys are sad Edgar says good riddance. He's done with Thor. See, again, we're going to have a lot of co contradicting stuff in here. Payroll needs to be closer to 280. I've been under that belief as well, but you have to realize that's been with the understanding that the Mets bring back Thor. Now that they have roughly $20 million freed up, they don't need to go to 280 for their luxury tax. I don't think they need to, but they very well still could. Yeah, the Mets could be in a spot where they still push 280 for sure. Um, <coughs> but I don't think I don't think they need to, but it wouldn't be outlandish if they did. Let me put it that way. Not having Thor gives them a lot more flexibility now, money-wise. Even though that they already had endless amount of it. This, so this just this adds on for them. It's amazing part of my pun that with the rotation we had in 2015, where it is now, and the Grom is the best of them all. I know. I, I agree. I agree. Jake, Jake was the hand gem from the start. Trade for Castillo Montas. Castillo will be a tough price. Montas won't be necessarily cheap either. I don't see a world where the Mets could land both of them via trade. One of them potentially, but I, I don't see a world where they can land both at all. Castillo would be relatively cheap. No, he would not. My good, are you joking? Luis Castillo is or is going to cause a bidding war trade wise this offseason. By no means is Luis Castillo going to be easy to acquire, you know, via trade. Hell no, not 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 even remotely close to the truth. He, Luis Castillo, is the biggest name of all starting pitchers available via trade in this market. 
He is the top name available. I think the Mets should give another overrated player millions for a 10-year deal. We need another 230 bat batter. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> How original of a comment, Will. FYI, Lindor's contract doesn't begin until this upcoming season. So, you know, let's, let's pump the brakes before bashing the man, before the year even begins. After what he had actually a very strong season, underwhelming offensively, same one with the entire Mets club, was literally, you know, a gold glove shortstop again and the 99 percentile of outs above average with a plus 20 at the position yeah uh, let, let's let's stop the narrative as if francis glendor is a bad player give me give me a break i dealt with that shit all season long i'm not dealing with it now so you, you can take that nonsense elsewhere i'm sorry <laughs> dave with the two dollar donation thank you so much for that my man losing no will kill the mets don't trust them Dave, Dave, you got pumped the brakes, Dave. I appreciate the donation, but we I don't know how much blame, if at all, we can put on the Mets here. If this if this was all on Noah, and if the Mets, even in this scenario where the Mets maybe had a multi-year deal for him and he still decided to do the one-year deal, that tells you all you need to know about Noah's priority versus the Mets, right? So I, pump the brakes, Dave, before you, you draw conclusions. That's what I would say right now. Don't go there yet. I appreciate the donation, no less. You've been a great supporter on the channel. We'll pump, we'll pump the brakes good, Juan. I'm glad. <laughs> he said overrated. I don't I think I don't really think Lindor's Lindor's overrated from how the approach was heading into the season. You could say that for sure. But Lindor as an all-round player, offensively, defensively, as long as he just plays to his caliber like he did after his unbelievably slow start for the first couple months of the season. I, he he brings you so much as a dynamic, one of the best shortstops in the game. People just need to stop acting like Francisco Lindor is the second coming to Barry Bonds. He's not going to be someone that is supposed to get you consistently 35, 40 bombs over 100 RBIs. No, he's someone that will be looming in that 25 to pushing 30 home runs, maybe even more, you know, 75 to 90 RBI guy varying, big on base. Again, this isn't a Francisco Lindor stream, though. We're going to be talking about him so much during the offseason. I know. And I'm not trying to target anyone individually. I'm just, as someone who's talked about Lindor endlessly throughout the past year, I just, I just want, a, I just want to, you know, put that aside for a second, okay? Because we're going to get the same kind of narrative comments over and over again about him. Revheads with a two dollar donation. Thank you, my man. Hope you're doing well. Are Yamamoto and Lucchese alive and on the team? Yamamoto is alive. He is healthy. It looks like because I know he dealt with a big injury last year. Lucchese is dealing with Tommy John surgery. Coming back from that, I think there's actually a decent chance that Joey doesn't even uh, make uh, past. I think I think there's a solid chance Joey Lucchese actually gets non tendered by the Mets. We'll see. But you know, with him dealing with Tommy John, going to be out all next year for the most part. Uh, I wouldn't be surprising the Mets part ways with Joey, um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with Lucchese. I like Lucchese. I think he'd be actually a big force as a long relief guy out of the pen. Um, love that serve, but yeah, no. Uh, Joey's future with the Mets feels very uncertain in my opinion. Can't really blame the Mets because Thor has been injured a lot, and were the Mets really going to give him 21 a year? At this, uh, granted, though, I, I do blame the Mets if they weren't if they wouldn't be willing to give Noah just – not even $3 million more than the qualifying offer. If that was really what the case was, I have concern with the Mets on that front, just because you're losing a guy that has really as much potential upside for the risk than anyone else available on the market, knowing who knows Syndergaard is. So if that was the scenario, then I think that that is a bad look for the Mets. And that is more of a Zach Wheeler type feel, but I don't, I don't think that's what's transpired here personally. What's up, Alex? We got Yamamoto and Lucchese. We need top of the rotation pitchers. Absolutely, yeah. No, they're just depth guys. Yamamoto will be a depth guy next year for the Mets. He won't be in the rotation. When are we gaining an Epler press, press conference? It should be today. As long as the details are all finalized by then, 
Um, it should be today. I hope it's today. So that way, maybe we'll go live again on the channel or talk more about what's next for the Mets on their approach because questions need to be answered more on Noah for sure. Along with really everything to this point, now that the Mets have a new GM, I, I want I want to I want to hear what he has to say. I want to hear what the Mets have to say more on their approach this offseason. It's it's going to be a big presser. I'm looking. I'm really looking forward to it though. It just it obviously this is just a negative start to the day, unfortunately. <laughs> I need a month to get over this. Hold, hold, <laughs> look, Nick. You know uh, that's unfortunate. If that's the case. And I, I'm I don't know how long it's going to going to be where Noah leaving the Nets is going to bother me. And probably will be a lot a while. But the best way for the Mets to combat this is to just make sure that they have a damn good offseason the way that we all hope and believe that they will. Negative start to the offseason. Negative in the sense of it sucks to lose him, but I don't necessarily know how negative it is actually from the Mets operating wise. That's the thing. I, I it From right now, it doesn't look like this is at the Mets' fault here, but if more further details come out and this was completely avoidable, then yeah, would be. But from what everything we're seeing at this point, it doesn't look that way. Juan with the $5 donation. Thank you so much for the donor, Juan. Again, hype in the chat, folks. If you guys are enjoying the stream, I know that this has been a rather frustrating one. I don't know where we're in the like count, but help us get 200 likes by the end of the stream. Again, folks, always does mean a lot. Help us get into 10K subs too. Appreciate your support. Again, I was I I literally was in the shower this morning as my phone was blowing up about Noah. I was so stressed out. I, I my whole morning routine got messed up. You know, this is how you know it's Mets off season when I am literally on guard on standby, having to stay up late every single night to make sure that I don't miss any potential moves that happen during free agency in the off season. And now I have to wake up even earlier now to make sure I don't miss any early shit. Tywan Walker signed with the Mets last off season. It was like at seven seven thirty in the morning. Andy Martina broke it. Like, like, give me a, give me a break. Like, I, I wish that every move was just at a good time during the day, but no, we're, we're not allowed those nice things in the off season for sure. Juan with the five dollar donor. Thank you, my man. Beltron struggled his first year with the Mets. Look at what he did after. Lindor showed flashes of brilliance. He will be no. I'm. I don't have any concern really with Lindor at all. Uh, you know, if you go in, if you deep dive his numbers, you should not be concerned either. Again, everyone's just everyone is going to pin that contract on Lindor until his deathbed where it doesn't doesn't matter how well he thrives with the Mets he is going people are always going to critique that contract it, it's that's just how it's going to be I appreciate the donation though my man thank you so much um thanks again for the good info and work happy Thanksgiving let's go off season thank you again for the donation Goomba hype in the chat for Goomba as well for the five dollar dono yes happy early Thanksgiving everyone we're early we're going to be doing a lot more content before even Thanksgiving transpires wouldn't surprise me if I have to do some damn com content on Thanksgiving because some news comes out regarding the Mets. You know, they 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 hold they show no mercy to, to people that cover the Mets, like myself. They do not give a flying you know what. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy if, if Noah actually goes on the bump against the Mets this year, uh when they face off. That's gonna be nuts. <laughs> um let's see do i think the mets will poach coaches and talent from the rays offseason um this offseason uh talent wise i don't really see much look it is a dangerous game anytime that you do something with the tampa bay rays because normally they know what they're doing they normally have a one-up on you um would it be awesome if the mets could maybe get some people from their organization to be part of the mets team sure i mean maybe they could go and get a guy like carlos rodriguez um, who's their, uh, you know, director, I think of inner, uh, was it a player development and, uh, international scouting. I, I want to say, um, if they can get him as an assistant GM, that'd be awesome. But I don't know who Epler is going to bring in as assistant yet. We'll get into that again, shortly on the channel. Um, player wise, the only real player that I think could really be a fit for that, um, is, you know, a guy like Austin Meadows. Cause the Rays may part ways with him this off season. Cause they're going to have to shed some payroll. 
Um, Meadows would come in as a DH slash left left field fit. Um, huge bat, very young, still a lot of good potential with him for sure. Uh, but he would also cost a good amount trade wise. So I don't think the Mets are going to do anything drastic with uh, people from the Rays this year. But again, anything can happen. Two dollar donation here by Weblub. Thank you, my man Gosman, Gray, Marte, and Chapman trade. Get it done. Um, let's see. So Gosman, you want Gosman and Gray, that being John Gray, I'm assuming you're saying the free agent for the rotation. Starley Marte and Chapman trade. Okay. I mean, that would definitely help shore up the rotation for sure. Um, you know, it wouldn't do anything drastic for the rotation either, though, because you're bringing Kevin Gosman instead of Marcus Stroman. They're very similar pitchers, gonna be very gain very similar contracts. John Gray would be a back of the rotation starter like Tywin Walker. So I would honestly like to see the Mets do more than that rotation wise this offseason with the assumption that Stroman goes elsewhere. Would love Marte, would love Chapman at third as well. Um, again, not bad idea, but we'll see if that come becomes realistic or not, right? Um, for about two million, Cohen is a Thanksgiving tur turkey. Uh, <laughs> thank you again for the donation, Dave. But again, again, let's let's stop. I don't I don't think that we can sit here and blame everything on the Mets right now. If we get reports that the Mets simply felt that it wasn't worth it, just giving Noah a couple more million, then yeah, I think there's a big criticism that can be had with them. And that's going to put even further emphasis on how they approach their offseason. But if this is is the way that what everything is looking like it is, where Noah wanted to bet on himself, and in the scenario where the Mets even gave a contract offer on multiple years and he denied it, you know, I, I find it hard to believe that this is at my, Mets' fault then. I really, really do. Because it, it by no means does it indicate that way. Like I've said, though, it's very premature to really point fingers here on this entire situation. <clears throat> and thank you for the 100 likes, folks. Always appreciate. Again, help us get to 200 by the end of the stream. That's always appreciated as well. Hi, whoever becomes the 200th like in the stream, if we get it before we're done being live here, I'll make sure to give you a big shout out so there is some incentive. Not that it matters too much to you, but still. Um, maybe Cano gets back in the juice and rips the cover off the ball. No, no, <laughs> I don't see that happening. Steve Cohen bought the team one year too late. What, yeah, I, I know. Again, that's not on Steve though. That that's on Will Ponds because he tried to buy the team the year prior. Do you think every everything would have been different with Thor if we would have had a GM in place already before today or yesterday? No, I no, I don't think Epler has any really decision. I don't think Epler coming in as GM has had any impact in Noah here. And Cyberhunk, thank you for the kind words. I appreciate that. But again, to reiterate, folks, if you're just chiming in. Noah Syndergaard is no longer a New York Met. He is, in fact, a Los Angeles Angel. So where are the Mets going to go from here? They have a plethora of pitching options. Just to really further expand on the pitching market for agency right now, what we're working with, you know, we have Zach Grinke, Justin Verlander, who you'd have to give up a compensation pick for, Clayton Kershaw, Max Scherzer, Marcus Stroman for the Mets, Kevin Gosman, uh, UC Kikuchi, the Southpaw, Alex Cobb, um, Robbie Ray, uh, Carlos Rodon, Steven Matz. I don't think Matz would even be of consideration, though. Uh, just, go, just going through a whole list right now. I'm trying to make sure I don't miss any anyone significant. Uh, Alex Wood, John, John Gray, Anthony DiScalfani. None of them you would have to cough up a qualifying offer for. Uh, uh, compensation pick for because none of them were given a qualifying offer. You're expecting big bold things now. I don't want to hear that the Mets almost got this guy or they got or or that guy anymore. I want to hear the Mets got. No, I agree with you. Absolutely. No. Um the Mets, if they have an offseason at all similar to last year where they are in on everyone but they strike out on the majority, that's not a good look. I will say, however, don't be surprised to see the Mets be in on a lot of people. And they, of course, are not going to land everyone. It's important to do your due diligence and be really connected to anyone that can help your roster. 
So don't buy in stock that, oh, just because the Mets have interest in a player, that one, they're number one on the list out of all the other teams showing interest. Two, that the Mets are prioritizing that player more than others. It's important to have plans A all the way to Z figured out. Um, so just make sure, as Mets fans that you're following, that you don't get a false impression by the Mets maybe being connected to a player and he goes elsewhere because there's so much more than that goes into it. Okay. And that's been, that's been proven. So that's really what I'm saying. The Mets will inevitably be connected to players this offseason and not land them all. So just be prepared for it. Cause that that's normal. <laughs> Chris Bass and Chapman trade um, way more likely. I, I wouldn't say it's way more likely. I think that's something the Mets can definitely afford. However, especially given Chapman's value right now and Chris Bass only having one year left on his contract. I would I would be very much in favor of that, personally. I wouldn't be against that at all, as long as the Mets aren't giving up, you know, like a top prospect, like Alvarez, like a Beatty, um, even, even a Mauricio. I think they don't have to part with in order for a deal like that. But, you know, we'll see. I was going to say Trey for Brios, but they just extended it. Yeah, no, that... You really think the Blue Jays would part ways with Barrios after giving up their two and four prospects for him at the trade line? He was never going anywhere. I don't know what made people think that Barrios would be available to a team that just gave up so much for him that desperately needs starting pitching. Do you think not having a GM hurt these talks? No, I don't. I don't at all because I know that the Mets were we're prioritizing bringing Noah back. What's up, Andrew? How's it going, my man? They need to focus on Stroman, another top of the rotation starter. Couldn't agree more. Could not agree more. What pitches pitchers would I go for? I've already I've already reiterated, and I'll say it again. Like I said, I have two top five. Mets starting pitching targets videos out. I highly suggest you guys check them out for sure. Um, because that breaks them all down like in depth. But I would I think the Mets could really should go after a lot of the big names available right now and see what ones are best fit and evaluate the trade market too. I think they have to explore all options here. It would make plenty of sense if the Mets went hard after Gosman in the scenario they lose Stroman. It doesn't make as much sense if they go out hard after Gosman after landing Stroman. So that's a lot of money. Two guys are going to be looking for awfully similar contracts, five, six year deals, over 100 million. Um, I only see the Mets landing one guy on a long term deal like that, starting pitching wise this offseason. I think the other acquisitions, rotation wise, would either be shorter term deals, high AAV potentially, or trade market type. This one hurt, Rory. I know it did, Ariel. I know. I hear you. How do I feel about the Mets checking out Verlander? Um, I don't. I made a video on it, so check it out. Definitely suggest you do. But in a nutshell, I think the Mets have far better options for Verlander, given the fact that you have to give up your your 14th overall pick for him. If that wasn't the case, it'd be a very different discussion. But because you have to, I think the Mets can go down routes that would be much more realistic and really smarter ways to give up that pick if you're going to you know whether you go for a Robbie Ray for instance whether you go for a position player do they go all in on Carlos Correa I don't think that they will but he's a guy you'd have to cough up a pick for so if they're going to prioritize anyone I think that would be huge for them Nick Castellanos is someone you have to give up a pick for if you went down that route to potentially be a Michael Conforto replacement or DH type scenario um you know there are some huge names that you'd have to give up a pick for um, I don't think it should start with Justin Verlander. And no, thank you, Chaos. Appreciate the support. What about Rodon? Again, like Rodon a lot, my concern with him is his health. That's that's the wild card with him. And that's why his fragile market is going to be very interesting. Do I think Conforto stays or walks? I, I'm leaning more towards walks right now. But Billy Epler could could be a, a difference maker in that on how the Mets prioritize him. Because I don't think Sandy has been prioritizing Conforto much. Just from what I've seen, again, I don't I don't want to say something that's not true. I'm just sharing my opinion. Um, because 
sit if Epler comes in and say, Hey, we really need to prioritize Conforto, then they might for sure. Um, Conforto is a big wild card. Uh, I think there's there's a chance he comes back. It just doesn't feel likely right now. What do I think about a trade for Cattell Marte? I would love Cattell Marte, but he will cost he will cost you so much. Um, but with that being said, folks, that is going to wrap up today's discussion. The reason for it is one, it's early in the day, and something tells me that we're gonna have to go live again uh from the Billy Epler presser, like maybe this evening at say 7 p.m. Eastern time. So stay tuned for that. Um, might be earlier, might be later. Um, I feel like more is gonna come out obviously today once this is finalized for Noah. And rest assured, I really want to break down more on what's next for the Mets um, with their new GM in place because it's not just an emphasis on losing no on how to address the rotation, but it's an emphasis on the roster as a whole. You know, what is next for them? Is Stroman priority number one now next? Is Michael Conforto still in the reins as consideration? Are they going to be pulling hard at some, say, bigger tier or middle tier level uh, for agents before uh, the CBA potentially expires and we have the lockout in December. So we have a lot more that we're going to break down. So make sure that you guys stay tuned for that. Uh, again, thank you all so much for the continued support. I hope you guys enjoyed the live stream. I know this is a bummer of a topic. Don't get me wrong. I hope that I don't have to do many more like this. Um, obviously, we would have to do the same if Marcus Stroman goes elsewhere or Conforto because those are just naturally bigger names with the Mets that go elsewhere. So hopefully we don't have to do much more of this type of topic. Um, but we'll be back live on the channel either later today or have a video out there. So stay tuned for that. Uh, make sure to smash that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the stream, no less. And stay tuned for more great Mets content coming at you very soon throughout the day and the week and the weeks to come. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you all so much for the donations and the support. And I'll talk to you soon. Let's go Mets.